Hello everybody, this is Gary McGahar, welcome back to another video of Stardew Valley. In today's video I'm going to bring you through a beginner's guide on how you can make lots of money in the game. This guide will cover alternative methods from the well known methods that many people know of. So let's jump into the video and I hope you have some fun. A lot of people starting out in the game might not have a great deal of knowledge on what the best crop is to buy with your first 500 gold. There's many good crops here but in my opinion you can never go wrong with the potato seeds. It's 50 gold for one seed and you can purchase 10 of these at the very start of the game and the reason why you want to get at least 10 of these is because when you harvest a potato after 6 days there's a chance you can get 2 potatoes out of 1 seed. Not only will this double your profit for that seed, but it will also double your farming XP. So it's a very nice crop to get your hands on early. Potatoes only take 6 days to grow, so you can actually grow lots of these very quickly. And you can fill up your farm with these because they're very cheap in no time at all, netting you very nice profits in spring. You don't have to go the fishing slash strawberry route like a lot of pro players do. Next up, let's talk about foraging. There's four foragement items in spring. The leek, the dandelion, the daffodil, and the wild horse radish. If you merge these four foragements together, you can make spring wild seeds. And to get the recipe to make this, you only need level one in foraging. Now it's very easy to get level one in foraging. All you have to do is cut down a couple of trees, forage a few items, and the first day of spring, you'll get level one absolutely no problem at all. And what you want to do with your foraging items is you want to plant the spring wild seeds, harvest them, and then just keep rinse and repeating until you have hundreds of foragers on your farm. This is a magnificent way to increase your foraging level at a rapid pace. It's also a great way to make tons of money in spring through foraging. Because you can actually go further with this. You can get two hearts with Caroline by giving her daffodils because she likes those. Caroline will give you a recipe called a tea sapling. And to make a tea sapling, all you need are two wild seeds, and they can be spring, summer, fall, or winter wild seeds, some wood, and some fiber. And one tea sapling will sell for 500 gold. And that is absolutely amazing for the start of the game. It's a great money booster to really get your farm going. So, as you can see here, look at all the forageables that I'm picking up here. This is equivalent to one month worth of just rotating the forageables into spring seeds, planting them, harvesting them, and just rinse and repeating for a month. Look at all the forageables I have there. Let's turn all these into spring wild seeds just to show you how many we get. So, four forageables of each type will give you 10 wild seeds for spring. So, it's the horseradish, the daffodil, the leek, and the dandelion. So I've gotten well over 700 here, 790. I can now convert those 790 spring seeds into tea saplings. Now I don't have enough fiber and wood to get more tea saplings, but fiber and wood, it's a very common resource. So you can very easily make more tea saplings if you need more money. But 199 there, you know, that's gonna get you almost 100,000 gold because one tea sapling sells for 500 gold. And if you can get that kind of money, before you hit summer. There's a lot of things you can do. You could go to the desert, for example. You could get star fruit for summer. Or you could just purchase thousands of melons if you wanted to go that route. So it's it's an amazing game changer and it's something beginners can do very easily in the game. Just look at the price here for the potatoes. 88 gold for a regular potato. It's 50 gold to buy a seed. So you're making a very nice profit. Obviously, the higher your farming level, the greater the odds are you're going to get a better quality potato. Look at the spring seeds compared to the tea saplings. Only 35 gold for one spring seed, but 500 gold for the tea sapling. This is why you should always keep your wild seeds and convert them into tea saplings, because the profit margin is huge. So let's jump into summer. So let's pretend that you have entered summer with a very small amount of money. A great crop to kickstart off your summer adventure is the pepper seed. It only takes five days to mature and it continues to produce after the first harvest throughout the whole of summer. If you can manage to scrape together a few thousand gold, you can purchase lots of these and you will have loads of money by the end of summer by just harvesting peppers all the time. If you manage to get level eight farming in spring, I recommend you purchase hops. 
60 gold for one hop, but like the peppers, hops can be reharvested over and over again throughout summer, and you can convert those into cakes to make pale ale, and that sells for a hefty amount of money. But I only recommend this if you reach level 8 farming in spring. Now, it's not something a lot of beginners can do, but if you capitalize on the potatoes in spring, you can get there no problem. Also, take note that the wild seeds in summer only require three forageables, the spice berry, the grape, and the sweet pea. So, it's a lot easier to make wild seeds in summer than it is any other season in the game. That is the one great thing about summer. Also, if you pick the mushroom cave over the back cave, it, the mushroom cave is a lot more profitable because it gives you six free mushrooms every day. And these range from the purple mushroom, the marl, the red mushroom, the common mushroom, and the chanterelle. If you combine those four mushrooms together, bar the common mushroom, you can make a life elixir. The life elixir is worth 500 gold, but just so you know, it's more profitable to sell the mushrooms separately. But the life elixir is a great item to bring if you're doing dungeon runs, because it will always heal you to full. So I'm just gonna harvest some hot peppers here. And I am going to put these into a preserve jar. Now you can get the preserve jar at level 4 farming. And the preserve jar is a very cheap processing machine to make. All you need is some wood, some stone and some coal. And what you can do is you can put the peppers into the preserve jar. And you can make lovely pepper jelly. Now I know it sounds awful but it sells for a very nice money. And if you reach level 10 farming you get your lovely artisan profession. You can get a 40% profit on it, which is really nice. So let's put all the peppers into these preserve jars now. Now it takes a few days for the preserve jars to process these peppers, but it's definitely worth it because it will multiply the profit margin for you. So if you have achieved level 4 farming by summer, then break out those preserve jars and treat yourself to a nice profit. So I'm just going to make some pale ales here as well for the more advanced players. Just in case advanced players are watching this video, Pale Ale is an absolutely magnificent item to make in this game. So a hop goes for 27 gold, but if you convert it into a Pale Ale, it goes for 420 gold. That is a ginormous multiplier. Regular hot pepper goes for 44 gold. Converted into a jelly goes for 182 gold. That is amazing. Huge profits there. That's why... It's very important that you gather the resources as early as you can, get the skill levels and make these processing machines because these machines will change the way that you can operate this game. The more money you have, the more options you have. The more money you have, the more you can do with your farm and it makes the game more fun, it makes the game more enjoyable. It opens up the game very quickly, especially if you go to Georgia route, you can get the perks very fast. So let's jump into fall here. Let's just say you entered fall, but not a whole lot of money. A magnificent crop to get started in fall is the bok choy seed. Now it's 50 gold, but it only takes four days to grow. Meaning, if you want to make a super quick profit, buy lots of these seeds. Plant them. Within four days, you can sell them. If you have preserved jars, good for you. You can process it further. The eggplant seed is only 20 gold. It's super cheap. It just takes five days to mature. And... The great thing about the eggplant seed is that it regrows on its own. So you can plant loads of these and you have eggplants for the whole of summer and you can process those again using the preserve jar. Pumpkin seeds are your main goal of course because pickled pumpkins sell for a huge amount of money. But my advice is that if you don't have a lot of money to buy lots of pumpkins, start off with the smaller crops, the crops that take, you know, just a few days to grow. Harvest those, sell them, make the profits and then purchase the pumpkins and convert those into pickled pumpkins. Now pumpkin wine does sell for more than a pickled pumpkin but the difference is minuscule so if you have preserved jars by all means use those because the processing time takes much shorter than that of a keg. Just so you know for all the beginners out there kegs always take much longer to process items than that of a preserved jar but the golden rule is that normally when you put an item into a keg it is worth more than, you know, if you were to put it into a preserve jar. So as we can see there, 50 wood, 40 stone and 8 coal will get you a lovely preserve jar. It's an absolutely amazing processing machine. So let's look at our lovely mushroom cave here again. I just got 5 common mushrooms. Here's a great beginner tip for you. If you have common mushrooms, and if you can make tea saplings, 
put the common mushrooms into the seed makers and you will get back wild fall seeds which is absolutely amazing so i'm just going to put the common mushrooms into the seed makers right here let's fast forward time a little bit and let's see how much wild seeds we get back so i just got back nine fall seeds there by putting in five common mushrooms and we can convert those straight into tea saplings if we have the resources which is wood and fiber so again the tea sapling will always save the day if you need money for upgrades or if you need money to purchase anything tea saplings are so easy to make so there's a great tip for you with the seed makers let's sell some of our lovely fall crops so the bok choy 50 gold to buy 88 gold profit for a regular bok choy but 294 gold for a pickled bok choy that's really good 66 gold for a regular eggplant but 238 gold for a pickled eggplant that's a really nice profit especially if you have hundreds of eggplants so the rule of thumb here is to just stack yourself up with preserve jars and just process all of your crops and you will make tons of money in no time when you've made tons of money you can go ahead purchase your pumpkins now one pumpkin costs 100 gold but if you put these into preserve jars you will make your money back almost tenfold if you have the artisan pork so i just harvested some pumpkins here i got 100 pumpkins let's put these into preserve jars we get back pickled pumpkins notice that the pickled pumpkin there on the bottom left is blue blue means that you're going to get a lot of money for an item so think of it as an elite item let's sell some pumpkins and see what the profit margins are so i just sold one of each so 100 gold to purchase a pumpkin seed 352 gold without processing i mean that's that's really good 966 gold for a pickled pumpkin that's almost 10 times the value that is absolutely amazing and this is why a lot of pro players choose pickled pumpkins when they are doing challenge runs because the profit margin that you get back is huge so if you want to make lots of money in fall if you can afford it then treat yourself to some lovely pumpkins next up let's talk about winter yes you can absolutely do lots of stuff in winter such as having a huge winter foraging farm and it's absolutely amazing so basically you can get all the forages you need to make wild seeds for winter and you can plant these seeds on your farm now you have to water them but you don't have to worry about crows in the winter which is great and you can basically turn these lovely wild winter seeds into more tea saplings for you so you can make huge profits in winter using forageable items so to make the lovely forageables all you need is the crystal fruit the snow yam you need the crocus and of course you need the winter root and you can make as many winter wild seeds as possible now the last beginner tip I have for you today is to never underestimate the money you can make from monster drops. Now I used to hoard all of the monster drops that I got, but my advice to yourself is to sell these already to make extra bits of cash. Some of the items you can get from monsters can actually sell quite well. So let's just take a look at the void essences here, the solar essences, and occasionally strange buns that these shadow brutes and shadow shamans can drop. And I just picked up a a fire quartz there as well and that can sell for 100 gold you can also get the occasional mushroom so let's sell some monster loot just to show you what kind of money we can get 50 gold for the void essence 40 for the solar essence now if you're doing runs every few days you can accumulate quite a lot of essences and you can sell these to make a few thousand gold here and there and it's really nice to have that especially if you're looking to upgrade items so I'm going to leave the video there, I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more beginner approach videos like this, then just say so in the comments and like the video. The more likes the video gets, the more comments that I get that express interest, I'll make more beginner guides like this and cover other aspects of the game. Hope you have a great day. Bye for now.